presentation be given by Matthias Zenz. Matthias Zenz is a software architect for debug and trace tools at the Loderbach GmbH. He's been working as a software developer for a period of two decades, uh, with particular emphasis on embedded computing, providing support for diverse target architecture, debug communication protocol, frameworks, and APIs. Welcome to my webinar to all listeners out there. Uh, I have split up uh, the webinar into uh, four sections. Uh, uh, first of all, I will uh, show the requirements of a debug tool and show uh, different uh, debug architectures that are possibility to be used this I3C. As next point, I will tell you which MEPI uh, debug protocols are available for I3C and which can be used for the particular debug architecture. One important thing uh, for debugging applications is the performance of, of operations. That's why I'd like to compare different protocol alternatives uh, for certain use cases. Finally, I'd like to deduce conclusion and give uh, advice to debug architects uh, for target systems. So. Uh, while debugging an application, the debugger will do some basic operations in background. It will control and pull the state uh, of a core. It will read or write registers of a core in debug mode. It will access system memory as well as uh, core local memory. It accesses memory uh, map peripheral modules for debugging or uh, by the peripheral browser. Optionally, the debugger can access memory via the application runs uh, to transfer data from the application to the host, uh, for example, files or diagnostic messages. This is also known as semi-hosting. And for the architectures, uh, some popular debug architectures have a dedicated, uh, have a dedicated JTAG debug interface. Uh, here the debugger accesses uh, only by using JTAG. Uh, the debug logic is tightly coupled uh, to the core and allows controlling the debug state as well as uh, to emit instructions uh, by the course pipeline. By using these instructions, the debugger can access the core registers and all the memory that is visible uh, to the core. Uh, this method of interacting with the target system is called instruction stuffing. Uh, to access the system memory or peripherals, the core puts the address uh, access with and some flags uh, to the system bus. Uh, the flags can contain security, cache, or memory management unit attributes. Typical architectures using this pattern are ARM9, PowerPC, or Intel x86. More flexible architectures introduce the debug bus between the JTAG debug port and debug logic to connect different types uh, of debug ports or different cores and many cores. Also in these systems, the, debug, the debugger sends instructions uh, via the core debug logic to the core to access core registers or system memory. As an example for this architecture is the core side architecture from ARM and the APB bus. Typical architectures are ARM Cortex RR or RISC V. One extension to the debug bus architectures is a direct access to the system bus. This allows the debugger to bypass the core to access system memory or peripherals while the core is executing instructions. Of course, there is no access to local memory, cache data, or core local peripherals. Typical system buses are uh, ARM AXI bus or AHP bus from ARM. Another type of systems uh, does not need uh, a debug bus that is used for instruction stuffing Core registers are mapped uh, directly to a peripheral, peripheral registers. Uh, the debugger does not need to control the pipeline of the core. 
to execute instructions to access the core registers or system memory. Uh, this method enables fast block access to system memory due to the emission of single instructions word by word. A typical architecture is, for example, uh, Cortex M. In the next section, we try to see what alternatives we have to uh, for an implementation with the I3C and the related debug protocols. Uh, the specification debugging for I3C defines different network adapters to generate uh, JTAG data or bus accesses. There's a sneak peek network adapter uh, to link uh, the I3C private read and write transactions to the sneak peek protocol. The sneak peek protocol has a tiny and full encoding variant with different properties. The sneak peek, the tiny sneak peek protocol is made for uh, connections with small bandwidth. Sneak peek ends up in uh, different and multiple access spaces. I think initially, initially a sneak peek was invented as a protocol to access memory or peripheral in the target system. But since version two, there's also an extension uh, to output JDAC data. Another I3C network adapter is a simplified address map network adapter. Uh, it's using a protocol that is more focused on the payload and then on error transmission. And uh, it's better for the half duplex connection by L3C. The SAM network adapter has multiple endpoints uh, to address different buses or to encode uh, the access with for the bus. How we can use all these uh, different debug protocols to the addressed uh, target system debug architectures? Well, the, for the dedicated JTAG architecture, we will need a JTAG interface uh, of the sneak peek access space. For the architectures uh, using a debug bus, uh, we can use all introduced uh, protocols. Uh, debug buses often have 32 bit addresses, and debug registers are typical. 30 bit wide. Uh, we can even use uh, the JTAG access space in case the original debug port, port had a JTAG debug port. For architectures using a debug bus, all protocols match too, but uh, the protocols have set certain limitations. The SAM network adapter uh, need to be extended uh, to transport 32 bit addresses and the uh, accessive uh, need to be transferred by using different endpoints as suggested by the specification. SAM and sneak peek have to be extended to transport uh, additional flags and tiny sneak peek has to be extended to transport the uh, accessive. So in in the last section, I showed, I showed uh, that there are multiple ways to connect the target system. Uh, the next chapter will compare the different debug protocols uh, with the focus at performance for a certain use case. So for testing purposes, we have implemented an FPGA target uh, containing an I3C slave, the SAM network adapter and connected to an ARM Cortex-R5. There are uh, different uh, scenarios to test. One scenario is, uh, is a uh, assembler step. Uh, the assembler step leaves the debug mode, uh, executes one instruction at the current program counter and reads all the core registers. Reading the core re registers is uh, done by instruction stuffing for the Cortex-R5. Uh, so finally, our measurement uh, showed that uh, there are 11 milliseconds to take to execute one assembler step. Uh, this makes an, uh, 90 steps per second. Uh, as next text, we read system memory by using instruction stuffing word by word. And here we, the result is uh, 66 uh, kilobyte per seconds. Another 
test is to read system memory using instruction stuffing, but uh, as a block read using a FIFO register that repeats uh, one instruction. Uh, here is a value, here we reach a value of uh, 915 kilobytes per second. Uh, the last read test uses a SAM to bypass the core uh, and read the system memory directly. The performance is nearly identically compared uh, with the core and block read access. And all the experiments with the write accesses uh, show nearly identical results and trends as the read accesses. So ideally we would also have the throughput for the other protocols to compare them directly, but this takes too much time for us to implement all these scenarios. Um, to allow comparing the protocols, I've implemented a software solution uh, that receives IS3C data and translates it back uh, into system bus accesses or JTAG accesses and combine it using, using our remote API uh, with any evaluation board. Uh, due to the latency, the timing information can't be used, uh, but we have other parameters that can, that can tell us something about the performance. Uh, these parameters are the amount of E3C, I3C messages and the read and written bytes of the network adapters. Uh, the numbers with red background uh, show the performance of the tiny sneak peek JTAG for, for the sender single step. Uh, to, pro to process uh, one sender single step, uh, we need uh, approximately uh, 89,000 uh, JTAG clocks, uh, and this results into 100,000 uh, I3C data bytes to be transferred. So using the same baud rate uh, would mean that the tiny sneak peek JTAG is just 10 times slower than the normal JTAG for the sender step. So the yellow numbers indicate uh, that the number of messages for SAM is very high for the memory uh, reads via the core. For mes more messages uh, also mean more overhead for the underlying protocols. Um, processing memory via block access uh, avoids protocol overhead and the amount of messages is not so high. Uh, the blue numbers show the amount of transferred data for the uh, memory block read via the core. Uh, here we see that SAM transfers a minimum of bytes for all the protocols and the green number shows the memory access bypassing the core. Also here SAM transfers a minimum of bytes too but the difference uh, between the protocol is very small uh, because it's all, it's all processed as, as a block read. So now we come to uh, conclusion and outlook. So, uh, it looks that uh, debug architecture using a debug bus uh, can avoid uh, the sneak peek JTAG access bottleneck. And the same protocol is more uh, efficient uh, than the sneak peek and tiny sneak peek protocol for this half duplex uh, connection. Uh, instruction stuffing increases the overhead uh, of the protocols uh, due to many small read and write accesses. Um, to use the SAM for system bus, uh, you need to consider that the access with information is transported uh, by the selected endpoint. Um, commands to transfer flags are missing so far in, in the case of uh, 64 bit wide uh, addresses, the high part needs to be tr transferred to. Uh, for instruction stuffing, an address compression would be useful because there are only a few registers of the core debug registers that are accessed uh, frequently. Uh, 
to minimize the number of accessed core debug uh, registers, uh, synchronization to a slow execution of an instruction should be done rather by an I by an I3C acknowledge uh, or TBIT uh, instead of polling status register. So the debug tool can then just uh, retry or continue the operation. And after a certain number of retries, uh, status register can be polled to retrieve an error. To use a debug bus efficient, efficiently uh, to access the system memory via a core, the instructions should be not fetched word by word. Uh, a block access routine using a FIFO register executing the same preloaded instruction uh, repetitively would save uh, bandwidth. Uh, using HDR messages, message formats uh, can additionally speed up uh, system memory accesses and benefit from lager, from lager transactions. We have a, a few questions. Um... So I'll start uh, reading the first one, just uh, asking for a clarification of information. The performance of uh, values on slide 15 are all done using I3C as an interface from debugger to target system. And what is the speed and configuration of this uh, I3C bus? We use I3C in the single data rate mode and the speed uh, is, I think, eleven point five uh, megahertz. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's okay. So it's a standard standard data rate uh, with the bus running at the maximum uh, clock speed. Okay. Yes, and for the block access, uh, I, I think the throughput is what we also expect. So the, the only problems may appear uh, when they are. A lot of really small excesses uh, mm -hmm. uh, that result in uh, in much, uh, very much uh, uh, transactions. And also, um, when we read the memory via the core without the blocks, there are more error checks. So usually, this is probably more a scenario for emulation because then really the core runs slow and the debugger can issue a new uh, transaction very quickly and then probably <coughs> you need to have uh, you read your memory uh, word by word and checking all the status registers. I guess the next question refers to when you use the system bus uh, because yes if if the core is bypassed what about interruption handling? You bypass the core the debugger bypasses the core in order to read memory uh, by mm. runtime. And th that means um, all the memory that is accessed is, is probably some semi hosting memory to transfer messages, and the core is running all the time. And that means there, there are no the interrupts doesn't affect uh, the same mm. hosting here. So, and then when the core stopped, then we can also access the memory, but then there are no interrupt because uh, the core stopped. This configuration is used mostly to to fetch or set uh, memory values, not not so much for the uh, uh, core execution. Okay. There's another question. Said, can boundary scan tests be performed through I3C? Um, I'm assuming here that the question is, is uh, when you're using the I3C as a debug, uh, as debug bus. So in, in case <coughs> there is a sneak peek uh, network adapter and uh, the JTAG uh, access space is implemented, uh, boundary scan would be feasible by, just by JTAG. And, it's, so it's, it's the easiest idea to do that. So I don't I don't think there has been any other network that defined for boundary scan so far. Okay. So we, we could choose the JTAG part and and if we do that, uh, it's it's even effective because uh, there are really long scans, and then JTAG it's it's should be not uh, slower than JTAG finally. 
the, the clock speed is 12.5 maximum, but because of uh, protocol of red, the net bit trade in SDR mode, it's around 11 point something megabit per second. Okay, so um, so we have a question in, uh, is there a JTAG driver available for memory access? So we start from the JTAG port again, mm -hmm. and whatever is implemented, so there can be core registers and there can be instruction stuffing by the core to access memory, or behind the JTAG port, uh, there can be also the system bus to access memory. So it's it's just the question was what's behind JTAG. So it's not a question of I of I three C. Once you use uh, JTAG access space, uh, uh, then you have all the world all the world of JTAG available again. But it's not not very efficient. So it's better to use uh, network adapters. Uh, the SAM network adapter, or at least the sneak peek uh, access space to access memory. At what stage of, of product development would you recommend using the I3C as a debug? You know, probably in the, let's say, in the very beginning, you probably won't have more powerful, but you know, there's probably at some point, maybe the, the extra complication of, of other things, we can make an easier job to use I3C, you know, but what stage of, of the, uh, or product development, you, you think is uh, I3C as a debug interface most useful in, in your experience? Uh, yes, I think it's um, it's useful because it's even with two uh, I/O lines not uh, slower uh, than JTAG when we use the network adapters uh, for for uh, to access a bus, and so you save I/O lines. And uh, okay, there, there can be some improvements to the SAM network adapter for the address compression, uh, or, or also when we use it as system bus, uh, then we need to also transfer, uh, for example, the flex. So uh, because every every system bus interface has has more than only address and data, it has some some extra mm -hmm. flex for security and so on and there's no mechanism defined, but I think it can be easily extended finally. Yeah. What I liked on the same is also the error handling. Uh, um, when when I read data, uh, I get I just get the payload back uh, that I requested from the address. And and then if if there's if they if I get nothing bad by by uh, not acknowledgement, uh, then I just pull the uh, status register in order to retrieve the error. So I don't get uh, a lot of uh, messages that are okay, uh, that it doesn't want to know at this point of time. I just want to transfer the error as, as an exception. Yeah, and this is something very good at Sam. Um, in, in, in which situation uh, can the HDR, HDR mode enhance the performance? I think you kind of showed that in the table, perhaps it's worth to refine uh, a little more. You said, you know, it, it does help to, to, but you know, which situations I think is, you get yes. the most benefit by going HDR. Yes, as I understand, uh, you need to, to enable the HDR mode for every message. So after every start symbol, you need some codes to enable HDR. That's why we shouldn't use it for small messages because then you need already the bandwidth to enable HDR. So it's, in my point of view, only useful for the large messages, for the block accesses. Uh, yes, and then, yeah, then the system should be, will be really fast, I think. <laughs> but you haven't tried it yet. Okay. Not implemented yet to tell something about. Thanks again to everybody for um, for participation. All uh, MIPI debug specification are freely available. Uh, so you can download just by registering.